So you're looking for a natural or organic sunblock that's not packed with chemicals but is still effective? Then you've come to the right place. This DIY do-it-yourself sunblock video from Sundance Vacations is going to keep you protected from the day-to-day -day sun. Here's what you need. It's only four simple ingredients. A fourth a cup of coconut oil, half a cup of avocado oil, a fourth a cup of shea butter, and two tablespoons of zinc oxide. So you're gonna take a bowl to melt down the ingredients in. So I like to use a glass bowl when I do something like this because metal is often attached to the stigma of oxidizing when heated to a hot temperature, so glass is just always my go-to. Add in your quarter cup of coconut oil. Now coconut oil actually has a natural sun protection factor of about a five or a 10. So it's great to add this mixture in addition to other products for the recipe. I'm using Spectrum's USDA approved organic coconut oil. It's a virgin oil that's unrefined and expeller pressed. So I actually bought this do-it-yourself sunblock ingredient at Walmart, but you can order it almost anywhere. I'll attach an Amazon link in the bottom of this video and links to other products I use so that you can order them yourself. Next I put in half a cup of avocado oil. This Benissimo organic oil I actually got from Walmart as well, but you can find a similar product online. This may seem like a strange oil, but medhealth.net actually calls it a hidden treasure that many people have not yet discovered. Why? Because it's packed with benefits. The natural proteins and fats found in avocados make its oil hydrating to the skin, and the sterilin that it contains has been shown to soften skin and even reduce age spots. So I've heard many people complain about using an olive oil or a vegetable oil in their do-it-their-self sunblock recipe, and I assure you that avocado oil is so naturally hydrating that it hasn't ever affected my face. I put it on my nose, my cheeks, my forehead, and I've never had a breakout because of it. So that's it for the oils that I use. Now I've heard some people say that they like putting essential oils in their do-it-their-self sunblock so that they smell inviting or they like that certain scent. I tend to avoid doing something like that because I've, I've read online so many different things about lavender deterring insects versus attracting insects or their skin being irritated based on using citrus based oils such as oranges or lemon and I just avoid the argument altogether by simply not using any other scented products other than the natural avocado oil, the natural coconut oil, and this next ingredient that I'm going to be showing you. Next we add our thickening agent. Now I chose shea butter for its hydrating factors. Here I'm using Essential Depot's organic shea butter straight from Amazon, which is a grade A unrefined shea butter from the finest quality African shea trees. So now shea butter, like some of the other products that we saw before, is a great moisturizer. That's because it has vitamins A, E, and F in it, and some of the fatty acids like we saw in our avocado oil. In addition to this, it is also an anti-inflammatory, which has been known to soften or even smooth your skin. Some people like to use bee wax instead of shea butter in their recipe, and I would just say that that comes down to personal preference. I know that some people are probably more likely to have shea butter laying around their house than they would beeswax, so that's why I picked it for this recipe and for its moisturizing qualities. So let's put a fourth a cup of shea butter in here too to thicken up our mixture. Now we're going to make a double boiler to gently melt the mixture down. Take a pot of water with a few inches deep and bring it to a medium temperature on your stovetop. Give it about 20 minutes or so and just check on it, stir it and make sure that it's blending right. Once combined, remove the bowl from the heat and allow it to cool. So let's talk about zinc oxide. Now I know that name sounds scary, but it's actually a pharmaceutical grade product that comes from the natural mineral zinc. Actually, a lot of sunblocks do contain zinc oxide in them, but they're also riddled with a lot of other chemical concoctions that could be harmful to your skin. So mineral-based sunscreens that use zinc oxide actually protect your skin from UVA and UVB rays. Think of it as this little barrier that sits on top of your skin and blocks these rays from absorbing down into your pores. So let's just put two tablespoons of this in the mixture because that'll give you about a 20 SPF rating, which is great for a day-to-day -day block to wear. If you plan on spending some more time in the intense sun, make it three tablespoons and adjust your other ratios of the oils. Be sure not to breathe in too much of this powder too heavily, because it could be harmful if you decide to snuff the stuff, 
so just keep it away from your face while you're doing this mixture. We get the non-nano stuff from Sano Naturals. You'll find it in the description below. Generally, this kind has been scientifically tested to not be harmful to the skin or body because when applied in a lotion or cream form, it does not absorb through the skin, enter the bloodstream, or cause health problems like some chemicals may. Feel free to do more extended research on the nanoparticle debate. However, I assure you that many trusted products such as Badger use non-nano products. So after we let this sit for a few hours, it's going to harden into a paste-like consistency. Some people might like a thicker paste, and for them I would recommend storing your airtight mason jar in the fridge. If you'd like a thinner paste, just keep it somewhere in a cabinet. Play around with it and see what works best for you. So keep in mind that this product is only going to be effective for about six months. After that, it starts to lose its efficiency, and I would suggest only making a certain amount that you're going to use within that time span. So this particular sunscreen is going to give you about a 25 to a 30 sun protection rating. So that means that if you are going to be going somewhere with intense sunshine, like a beach, I would not recommend wearing this. If you're going to do something like that, I would suggest that you add another tablespoon of the zinc dioxide to protect yourself a little bit more from the sun. Bear in mind if you're going to be swimming or sweating somewhere, reapply every few hours like you would any other sunblock. If you have any more questions, please feel free to comment below in this video and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. And be sure to subscribe to Sundance Vacations on YouTube for more travel tips and do-it-yourself videos.